Um, welcome. The first thing I want you to do is actually try to uh, imagine your favorite dishes, you know, tasty food. Imagine just food that you would proudly serve to guests, regardless if you can cook or not. Just imagine that and keep this image, because I'm going to use this later. And January, beginning February, I came in contact with a very interesting person. We spoke on the phone, and we actually agreed to meet in, a, in my hometown in a coffee shop. This person was kind of on a mission, which he succeeded in later this year, becoming the first Danish astronaut ever. But this day in the, in the coffee shop, he had a complete different mission. He asked me, would it be possible to make a Danish menu for the space station? He wanted to serve a dinner, a Danish dinner, for his colleagues. I was like, yeah, I guess. And, and I, I didn't know what, you know, I didn't know so much about this mission. So I was like, when is this going to happen? He said, I'm going to launch 2nd of September. And I was like, OK, how many guests are you expecting? Oh, we are expecting nine guests. OK, dinner for nine, half a year from now. No problem. <laughs> so he went away. He's a busy man. And the week afterwards, I was just full of ideas, like space, it's cold. Hey, let's do ice cream. Let's do cakes. Let's do everything. And I kind of had a menu in my head. This is what I'm going to do. And then a week after, the emails start ticking in from ASA with all the rules how to engage such a task. And out of the window, my menu went. And just to give you an idea of some of the rules, is the nine, nine cover menu went from nine to 130. 130 dinner, because they needed some for testing and other stuff. Uh, doability of the food was six months and 20 degrees. And, and in this process, I, get a, I got a call from, from them saying, hey, Torsten, bear in mind, maybe it's 25 degrees. And I know Andreas said one thing, no freeze dried. It has to be real food. And then there was the new challenge for me as a chef, which says I had to make sure that this menu could be eaten in zero gravity. And I was literally thinking, how on earth should I test this? Uh, and then the last part is actually the deadline. It moved to the first deadline I received was the 7th of April. This was one and a half month. So dinner for nine, half a year just became 130 in, in one and a half month. So after that, I, I thought, OK, now is probably a good time to meet the guys from ASA, the contact person, Roman, I had, to somehow figure out what to do. And Roman and, and his colleague visited me in Denmark. They were both space engineers. And uh, we were sitting again in the coffee shop trying to figure out a plan, how to approach this task. And in this conversation, one of his colleagues said he's doing an update or a new espresso machine for the station and stuff. And I was like, hey, if you do the espresso machine, I'm going to do the sweet for the coffee. So here we had my first component for the menu, sweet for the coffee. Afterwards, uh, there was this period of pure like research. They were sending me videos, how they live, how they do things on, on the station, space station. I was looking like every video or text I could find on the internet, everything some, that somehow would affect my menu. And um, there, are like, there are a lot of things that can affect the menu, I can tell you. But two, two things, again, I want to point out for you is me sitting in the living room and going through videos, and every everything in these one and a half months was space at home, suddenly. And I was seeing this astronaut eating, you know. He was flying around, the food was flying around. And my six-year-old daughter came to me and said, Daddy, is this your space food you have to do? I said, yeah, it is, actually. And she looked at me and said, that's not possible. And then she went away. I was like, thank you for the support. But, but I can tell you later on, the support came back. Because when we had to do the testing for the sweet for the coffee, she was fully into it. So, so no problem there. Now, the, the second thing I, I just uh, um, stumbled across, actually, was it said, when they, when they arrive at the space station, they lose the sense of smell. 
they cannot detect flavor. And I was like, that's probably not good for me. Because like 80 plus percent of how you taste or how you, your perception of taste is your smell, it's your flavor, it's, it's, you know? So I was like, okay, I wrote it down, just one more to, like, problem to go. Now I just had this, um, this, this, this task of, and, and people ask me actually, why is this with the smell that we lose this? And it's, and, and it's called fluid shift. Some, it's, it's actually the way the blood reacts in, in zero gravity, it, cre it creates kind of a pressure in your head, so you, you cannot smell. Note it down, check. So now I had a pretty much an overview over the task, what to do and what not, and now I came back to like my big passion, why I became a chef, why I love to be a chef, and, and this is called gastrophysics. Not astrophysics, <laughs> gastrophysics. And um, what is that? It is the science of taste and well-being, meaning physically and mentally. You can also put it as the way we interact with food, each other, and our surroundings. This is normally the way I create dishes or small experience in, in the restaurant, but also solve tasks like this. And I knew right away that no smell, hmm, what, what can we do? And there's something called umami, a taste, umami. And it works kind of like if you have some receptors on your tongue. And these receptors can, det can detect or grab actually broken down certain proteins, broken down to amino acids. And if they grab these, it will send a signal right to your brain. Little like your reward of sugar. And it will tell you, to give you a sensation of great taste, of a rich taste. I knew this was something I had to like, base my, my ideas of my menu on. So what was the menu? It was beef, which was salted or cured, to keep like a red color, because it's normally food which is prepared to, in this matter, it's like gray, or not nice, or pleasant to look at and to sell it together with onions and cabbage and some special spices, everything designed to trigger as many of these receptors as possible. Dessert was cream caramel, rhubarb, lemon, and then the sweet for the coffee. The sweet for the coffee, I designed together with a dear friend of mine, he's actually a chocolate master, world-class chocolate master, and we came up with this idea today to do a space rock. We wanted to look like something out of space, um, and so we did. So now I had my menu. And now I want you to remember the menu you hopefully had in the beginning of this. Try to again to take this menu and imagine a big table, put this menu on there, multiply it with 10. So you have a menu for 10 on front of your table. And that, that's, that's the last little challenge. Does it fit in here? Because <laughs> it has to fit in here. You have six and a half kilo and that's. And this, this was like the last of the, you know, email thing. <laughs> so, so now I physically have somehow had a menu in this box. And, and, but I, food is just much more than just not being hungry. Food is also stimulating your senses and, 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 you know, being human. So, Andreas, in the beginning, so can you do like you do in the restaurants, like building a surprise when you eat something in an upper gourmet restaurant, there's always like something inside that's liquid or whatever. Uh, and said, we can try, but I don't know if we can secretly make something nobody knows about and bring it to the space station, <laughs> but, but we try. So me and Pella, we came up with this idea of taking the space rock, actually I have one here, the space rock of, of this Danish chocolate, we thought of a idea that maybe the filling could be special. So we asked Esa and Andre helped us with this to get notes from every wife of and or loved ones from their astronaut, handwritten. They send these back to us. We fold them together and put them inside these chocolates, and we 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 sent them as, um, away. And we did tell no one. And this was like first week of April, and it was hard to keep that secret. So. Off he went, everything went to control and custom, and I guess 
Andre uh, used his driver license for a Russian rocket and went up. And later he speaks about the moment when they eat bite this and see this note. And they go like, oh, it's like a fortune cookie. Very funny. And then, <laughs> and then they pick up this note and, and the second after they start reading, they went quiet. Because they just recognized the handwriting of the loved ones. So sitting in a space station, 2015, no SMS, no email, handwritten letter. So we created this special moment. And these special moments are very important for us. Try to imagine yourself being in a rocket, going somewhere, Mars. Don't have the sunrise, the sundown, the seasons. You don't even have the, the, the Earth in the window. You need reference points. So by sharing food and sharing moments, we create these social reference points. We always can bring up. So this is very important. And we, if we want to go to further than space than we are now, we need to go from just surviving to living. So, and to prove my point, I want you to grab under your chairs. There should be some little bag of something. I can hear some of them got them. And now uh, I want you to, because not many people in the world have actually tasted these. Uh, so me and Pella, we made these for you. And what I want you to do is bite half of it, close your eyes for five seconds, enjoy, open your eyes, take the rest of it, and look around and enjoy the moment. And that's why I'm saying to you, when you go to Mars, bring a chef. Thank you.